Hello and welcome. In this lesson, we'll explore the laws of logarithmic numbers. Remember that when simplifying exponential numbers or expressions, we follow the exponent laws. Just like with exponential numbers, and since logarithms are nothing but exponents, when we operate with logarithmic numbers or expressions, we follow similar laws, which we call logarithmic laws. Because of the connection between exponents and logarithms, there will be some connection between the exponent laws and logarithmic laws. So, the product law of exponents helps us find the product of two exponential numbers. So, a to the power of x times a power y equals a to the power of x plus y. The power law helps us find the power of an exponential number. So a to the power of x to the power y is a to the power x times y. The quotient law helps us divide two exponential numbers, a to the power x divided by a to the y equals a to the power of x minus y. The laws of logarithm are as follows. The product law helps us find the logarithm of the product of two numbers. The power law helps us find the power of a logarithmic number. And the quotient law helps us find the logarithm of the quotient of two numbers. We're going to go over the proofs. And remember that it is very, very important that not only we use formulas, but we also understand where they come from because uh, that deepens our understanding and our ability to use the formulas in the right place and in the right way. So let's get started with the product law. Log with base a of xy equals log with base a of x plus log with base a of y. So I'm going to rewrite this formula down here. So we are trying to prove that the left side equals the right side. So I'm going to start by letting log with base a of x equals some number m. And log with base a of y equals some number n. According to the properties of log, we'll say that a to the power of m equals x. And similar to this, log with base a of y suggests that a to the power of n equals y. And now that I have another name for the variables x and y, so they're also called a to the m and a to the n. I will go back to the left side and I will rewrite the term log with base a of x, y as log with base a of a to the m times a to the power of n. This is multiplication of two exponential numbers with the same base, so I can bring these two terms together to make log with base a to the power of m plus n. So we have arrived to one of the log properties. Log with base a of a to the power m plus n. These two simplify. The answer is m plus n. And now recall that m is nothing but log with base a of x. And n is nothing but log with base a of y. So we'll say that log with base a of x y equals log with base a of x plus log with base a of y. Now we're going to move on to the next proof. Let's write this down here though.
we have log with base a of x to the r equals r log with base a of x. Oops, sorry, we have a in here. So, what we are going to prove in here is the left side equals the right side. So, similar to what we did before, what we are going to do is we're going to let log with base a of x equals some number m. That means that a to the power of m equals x. Remember, base to the power of m equals x. So we'll go back to the left side and we'll say that log with base a of x to the power of r can be written as log with base a. Instead of x, we'll write a to the power of m. And we still have it to the power of r. So that would be log with base a of a to the power of m times r, the power law of exponents here. Now, we have arrived to a log property. Log with base a of a to the power, to so some power, would be equal to that power. Now, remember that m is what we call log with base a of x. So, r times log with base a of x. So the left side equals the right side. So the power law is log with base a of x to the r equals r log with base a of x. This is a very useful property and easy to remember because this power will come to the front of log. Now you can prove the last law on your own. I have confidence in that, but we're going to go over it together. Remember that if, if you would like to, just pause the video and try it. It's more fun. It's always more fun. So we're trying to prove that the left side here equals the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'll use the power law here and the product law in combination to prove the quotient. So I will work with the left side log with base a of x over y can also be written as log with base a let's keep this focused here <laughs> x times y to the power of negative one now there is a product in here which i know how to simplify so i'll go log with base a of x because of the product, I'll have plus here. Log with base a of y to the power negative 1. Oh, wait a second. This looks like the power law. So this would be log with base a of x plus negative 1 log with base a of y. So we have arrived to the end. We have log with base a of x minus log with base a of y. So this equals the right side. So see, we started on the left side and arrived to the right side. So we're going to say that log with base a of x over y equals log base a x minus log with base a of y. So let's have fun practicing the formulas of the logarithmic laws. We have to simplify each expression. To simplify something means to make it smaller. So what we have in here is the sum of two logs. The bases, remember, have to be the same. So that means we have the product law. So 6 times 4.5. And that would equal log with base 3 of 25. Next, we have the difference, which means quotient. So we have log with base 2 
of 48 divided by 3. Let's load with base 2 of 16. Wait a second, I think I can simplify even more. So you have log with base 2 of 16 is 2 to the power 4. So see how these two, we say goodbye to them. The answer is 4. Next we have log with base 5 of, we're going to write 25 as an exponential with base 5. And then we have the power of 1 over 3 because of the radical. So this equals log with base 5 of 5 to the power of 2 thirds. The answer is 2 over 3. One last question in this 9. We have log with base 3 of 3 squared, that's 9, to the power of 1 third. Log with base 3 of 3 to the power of 2 over 3. The answer is oh, 2 over 3 again. <laughs> Now, the next question we have to express a single log. So we have two terms here, three terms here, and we have some variables inside the log here. So let's get started. So I see here we have a plus, that means product law. Log with base 7 of 30 plus log with base 7 of 10 is 30 times 10. That's log with base 7 of 300. Next. As you see here, you don't see any bases. That means that the base is 10. You don't have to continue writing. It's implied, right? So we know it's 10. So we have log with base 10 of 12. So I'll leave it as log 12 for now. There is no much to do. Notice how here we have a coefficient. For us to combine log terms... We need to have a coefficient of 1. So this coefficient will come inside the log and become a power. So we'll write this as log with base 10, 7 to the power of a half, and then minus log with base 10 of 2. Now, you see that some terms have a plus and some terms have a minus. So that means we have a combination of product with quotient. So since we're going to have quotient though, then what we're going to do is write log first. They all come together into one log with base 10. And inside the log with base 10, we're going to have a fraction. So in the numerator, we'll go all the terms that are in positive log. So 12 is positive. That goes on top. 7 to the power of 1 half. That's positive. That goes on top. Now, whenever we see a negative, that will have to go down in the denominator. So here we go, 12 multiplied by 7 to the power of 1 over 2. That's root 7. And then minus log 2 means that the number 2 will go at the bottom. So simplify a bit more, and we have log of 6 root 7, because 12 and 2 simplify to 6. That's it. Next question. We have log with base 3. Sorry. What's wrong with it? Here. <laughs> x squared minus 1 minus log with base 3, x plus 1. So I have a base 3 in both of them. I have a minus, so that means a fraction. And whichever log was with a minus will come to the denominator plus the numerator. So we'll say log with base 3. Wait a second, I think I can simplify this. We have x plus 1, x minus 1 over x plus 1, which equals log with base 3 of x minus 1. Next, In the next example, we are going to do the opposite of what we just did, so we are expanding. So, we have log with base 6 of x squared plus y cubed. So that means we have the product. So we're applying the, we are applying the product, goodness. <laughs> so 
x squared because of the product plus log with base 6 of y cubed. Now these powers will come to the front plus 3 log with base 6 of y. Next, log with base 2 and there are a few things I need to take care of here. So we have division. In the denominator, I have two terms, b times c. In the numerator, I have one term, fourth root of a. So that means that I'm going to have one positive and two negative terms. The logs will be with base 2, all of them. Negative will be whatever terms I had in the denominator. Positive will be whatever terms I had in the numerator, which is fourth root of A. And next we are going to rewrite the fourth root of A as an exponential number. Which is one fourth log with base 2 of a minus log with base 2 of b minus log with base 2 of c. That's the answer. That's as expanded as it can be. Here we go. Another example. You can try it on your own. Definitely. So log with base a. And let's take a look at what we have in here. Quite a few things. So we have a big square root, and the square root applies to every term inside the root, which means that we'll have x to the power of 3 to the power of a half, y to the power of 2 to the power of a half, and down in the denominator we'll have w to the power of a half. That means we have log with base a of x to the power of 3 over 2 multiplied by y to the power of 2 times 1 over 2, 1, divided by w to the power of 1 half. So we have only one term in the denominator, the others in the numerator. We have log with base a of x to the power of 3 over 2 because of the product plus log with base a of y and whatever is in the denominator will take a negative sign so minus log with base a of w in a more simplified form or more expanded form we should say 3 over 2 comes to the front and the power of 1 over 2 for w will also come to the front so 3 over 2 log ax plus log ay minus half log aw. One more. Log with base a of we have quite a few terms in here. We're going to write each of them in exponential form. We have x to the power 3 y to the power of half, and z to the power of 2. So we have product, and then we have quotient. So that's log with base a of x to the 3 plus log with base a of y to the power of half, and then minus log with base a of z squared. Bring the coefficients to the front so it's more expanded. Log with base a of x, half log with base a of y, and then minus 2 log with base a of z. Now let's rewrite as a single log some expressions that involve x. Let's focus this. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. We're adding and subtracting. No, we're just subtracting. So we have a term that is positive, this term which is negative, and this one negative. 
So if we express as a single log, means that we have to write log with base A only once. And because we have division, we are going to write a fraction. In the numerator, we're going to place the positive log term, so x squared minus 1. In the denominator, we'll have x plus 1. Sorry, I'm going to make them green. x minus 1. This is very interesting. <laughs> Look at what happens. Log with base a of x squared minus 1 over, look at x plus 1, x minus 1, that's also x squared minus 1. So log with base a of 1, even better, the answer is 0. The next question, we have 1 third, so that's a positive, log with base a of x squared minus 4, minus log with base a of y, minus 4 log a z. So again, we're going to have to write log a only once because we want a single log. So one third of x squared minus 1. Sorry, here we go. Sorry. So first thing that we want to do is bring the power in. So we have a power of 1 over 3. And we have a power of 4, right? So power coefficient, same idea. So we have log with base a of x squared minus 1 to the power of 1 over 3 minus log with base a of y minus log with base a of z to the power of 4. So we cannot combine the log terms unless their coefficients are 1 or negative 1 for that matter. So now we are able to bring them together. So now we can write log with base a only once. And we have minuses in here, which means we must have a fraction. And in the denominator, we're going to have the terms that are inside the logs that are negative, which means the y and the z to the power of 4 will go down. And x squared minus 1 to the power of 1 over 3 will stay in the numerator. And that would be the answer. So that's it about the logarithmic laws. And I hope you enjoyed the lesson. I hope you enjoyed the proofs. Try to practice as much as you can. Practice makes perfect, especially in questions like these. And um, again, thank you very much for listening to my lessons. Bye for now.